Good evening. We have a prayer for the animals. As we gather today to honor those working with homeless animals, we are grateful for the dogs and cats who so willingly share our lives. We are grateful for their companionship and their loyalty. We are grateful for their friendship and their kindness. We are grateful for the joy and the happiness they bring to each of us. We are grateful for the people who care for homeless animals. Those animals whose companions can no longer keep them. Those animals which are lost, lonely, and in need of a safe place to stay. We are grateful for the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society, for the staff that faithfully works to save lives, for the volunteers who give countless hours to help homeless pets, for the donors who give dollars, not only to build a new shelter, but for their donations every day that provide food, utilities, and medicine so that these innocent animals may live. We gather today to celebrate all of the people and all of the animals that call Santa Maria home. We are grateful for each of you gathered here today. Thank you for your support. Amen. up is with Tim. This is Shenzi. She's a seven-year-old mix that we have at the shelter. She's good with kids. She's good with most other dogs. She loves people. She'll let you know when you're not paying enough attention to her and she does it in a very nice but uh, I guess not so subtle way. She's a dog that really is looking to be somebody's house dog that just wants to be next to their side at all times. If you're ever looking for a dog that just wants to give you unconditional love, that is that dog right there. She is about as sweet as they get. So that is Miss Shenzi. She's our seven-year-old mix. Thank you, Tim. That was a good turn, too. All right. Hi, sweetie. Good girl, Jasmine. Next up, we have Susan, and she's bringing the talented Mr. Ripley. He's about a four-year-old, uh, let's go with a Chewini mix. He loves kids, he loves walks. That is this dog's favorite thing to do, is actually go on walks. I took him three miles the other day, and as I was panting, he looked up at me and went, can we go further, please, can we go more? So he's a dog that's looking for someone that really likes to go out for a good walk, but at the same time, he loves to sleep. He's got that on and off switch, someone that would love to have a dog that just wants to be carried like he is now. Thanks, Susan. Hi, Ripley. The next dog that we have is walking up with the lovely Anne. This is Macho. He's a two-year-old mix. He jumps about as I am tall. I mean, this dog is, uh, as you can see with those long legs right there, he's got a lot of uh, energy. He is the resident snuggle bug. He jumps up in your arms when you say, Macho, and uh, he likes to be carried around. I think that he would do really good in kind of like a daddy pack that sits in the front. I feel like he's one of those kind of dogs. 
Hi, Macho. He likes other dogs. He just likes to play a lot. And uh, he's looking for a high active family that wants to go, hey, let's go outside and play, but at the same time, I want to sleep. Bye, Macho. And so the last dog will be over here with Tavia. She's bringing Mr. Oscar. Oscar is about four years old. He's looking to be carried wherever he goes. That is his favorite place to be. He's very similar to, I guess what you would say is kind of like a purse. Uh, he likes to be with you at all times. He likes to be carried everywhere. He does some walking, but it's really just from his kennel to the outdoor yard where he says, I really like the grass, but I want to be on your lap while I'm outside in the grass. So he's one dog that would fit into most homes. He's looking for kind of like a, a, a very low energy house, not too chaotic, somewhere he can have the time to just kind of settle in and just be a part of life. Thank you, Tavia. All these animals are adoptable. They are all ready to go home. So please contact us if you're looking for a new family friend and we can kind of get you set up how we're supposed to. Hi, Jazz. Oh, that's my good girl. Here's Sean Hawkins, the executive director. Good job, Stephen. Thank you. So I was asked to tell you about our greatest need tonight. And I don't think that um, any of you are unaware of the horrific wildfires that are facing our state right now. Um, you may not know that last year, the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society accepted 137 dogs from Hurricane Harvey in the Gulf Coast, and we turned around and accepted 88 dogs and cats as a result of the mudslides here in Montecito. So our organization is always on the front line um, we have actually been put on official standby from Santa Barbara County two times in the last three weeks. And what standby means for us is that we have to prepare to receive as many as 100 animals at one time. So we're um, very much at the ready and ready to respond. And what we would like to ask you to help support tonight is our disaster response fund. So when you contribute to our disaster response fund, what that money does is provide for transportation, emergency medical care, food, housing, um, and any needs associated with moving animals out of an immediate fire danger to our shelter and then caring for those pets until they get a home. So tonight we're going to be raising money for our disaster response fund and we hope that you give very generously. Thank you. Santa Maria Valley Humane Society Board of Directors, and I am thrilled to be here, sixth year running. Once you serve with Betty, you always serve with Betty Baxter. Let's give Betty Baxter a hand every year. It's about the dogs and the special relationship between our animals and human beings. It's so enriching, and again, that's why we are here to enhance the Humane Society and keep your community shelter running. So, my honored job this evening is to introduce all these darling dogs and their owners that are gonna be participating tonight in the, uh, I guess we're calling it a fashion show. Dog show, fashion show. Funny Face was found on our property October of 2012 when he was approximately a year old. He's an alpha dog totally dominates every dog he sees. Funny takes his treats, lays with them at the entrance of the hall, and won't allow others to pass. Now, I'm, I'm going to add uh, a little bit about Diane, as well as Larry and their dog-loving selves. They have just recently lost two of their beloved pets, although we believe there may very well be a new family member soon in their lives through the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society. Take one more pass out there, funny face. You deserve it. You are the guy. And let's give Diane a round of applause. Sandra, go on out there and uh, you two show off a little bit. Oreo turned seven this year. He's still a strong, cute boy who is always entertaining. He's happy and loves to go on rides in the car with mom. This is his fourth appearance at the hoedown and he loves meeting up with old friends each year. Is Oreo going to do a little trick down there for us? <laughs> he can shake. And where, very nice. And where did you acquire Oreo? 
There you go. Let's hear it for the Humane Society. I knew that. I just had to throw it in there. So Alibi is a Italian spinoni. And uh, her name is Alibi because I'm a criminal defense attorney with the public defender's office. So the inside joke was never leave home without an alibi. And she is a purebred Italian spinoni. Come on. But she has stage four. And Alibi does not like it. We can go around it, on it, through it, whatever we want to do. Thank you very much. This is our own Bonnie Stewart, who has been with the San Rio Valley Humane Society probably as long as I have, which is a long time. Hello, Miss Bonnie. Hello, Miss Bella. Strut your stuff, girls. Bella is a nine-year-old American Staffordshire Terrier rescued when she was only two years old. She has had the ideal life with brother Cody and four furry cat brothers. She loves to play ball and just hang out with dad, Mr. Richard Stewart, who is a large part of the Humane Society as well. Uh, and they, they just love to hang out in the yard. Bella's a super girl with only one eye who's dead on with the ball. And does she, oh, there's the ball. We've got the ball. Is she gonna behave herself? Or are we gonna do, there it is. Good girl. Good girl, Bella. Thank you, Bonnie. Superwoman Bella has written her own bio. My name is Honey. I am a soft, cuddly, snuggly bundle of joy. I am a poodle mix and about seven years old. My Aunt Terry looked for me many months for just the special pet for her parents. She wanted a friendly, non-yapping lap dog that likes to walk. When she found me at the pound in Sanger, California, she knew I was the perfect one. My mom thinks I'm beautiful, even with my eight missing teeth. <laughs> my mom works in real estate and sits on the couch. Looking out the window at my other doggy friends walking by. When mom comes around the corner, she honks. The horn, she honks the horn and I run to greet her as she hollers, Hi honey, I'm home. I can hear it now. Hi honey, I'm home. And we have our fun time together. She thanks God every day for me. And that's Honey, Honey and Jean Studer. Last year we did Doggy in the Window. I had more requests this year. Do I need to hand you the mic? With the doggy in the Not the Doggy in the Window, the other one. Honey. Honey with his tail cut short and his ears cut long. Oh, where, oh, where has she gone? Oh, where, oh, where is my little dog gone? Oh, where, oh, where can she be? With nine teeth missing, she's still good at kissing, and she's the one for me. I go by Casey, sometimes called Pokey, because when I want to get someone's attention, I give them a poke in their nose. I'm about 12 years old, I'm a rescue dog, I love going for walks and just lazing around. I am a happy-go-lucky girl. I even have my own chair with my own blanket. I am truly blessed. This is the third time to the dog show. Still scary, but it's fun. And did you have fun today, Jackson? She says, my name is Ginger. I am a rescued dog. I'm about seven years old. Have been living here with my aunt for a little over a year and love it. I have a few scars on my side. The vet said it looked like I may have been hit by a car. When I first got here, I had to have 19 teeth pulled. Ouch! It made it a lot easier to eat, so then I got a little fluffier. <laughs> this is my first show, and I'm enjoying it. When I first met Sugar, she was all alone. Lots of people had met her but no one had chosen her. 
My heart was immediately touched by this sweet, shy, petite, quiet, demure little girl. Tucked inside Sugar's purse today is a tiny stuffed dog that looks like her little sister, Honey Bun, and a photo of her little brother, Manny. Both Honey Bun and Manny passed away in 2018. Go back out there, girls. But they will be forever tucked in our hearts. And take a look again at the little purse as these two go down the stage here again. There's her little purse with her little friends, Honey Bun and Manny, still in her heart. Thank you, Sharon. You two did a wonderful job. And you're very festive. I got I gotta say our artist. You can stay right right here. This is the Stevens clan, as I call them. Glinda is the artist that does these phenomenal paintings on the um, fire hydrants, but she has also done a gorgeous mural out at the shelter. And if you folks have not been out to visit the shelter, I encourage you to do so. Uh, we are giving shelter tours, uh, and we have a regular schedule of those tours. You can call the shelter and uh, come join us. We'll give you a behind-the-scene tour with Sean Hawkins, our executive director. We'll take you through the vet clinic and all those places that the public normally doesn't go, we'll let you know far more about our programs. But I really wanted to honor Glenda. I'm not sure, there she is, there's Glenda. She has helped us out tremendously throughout Trusa and through Betty Baxter and all of her efforts to raise money for our shelter. And again, I'd like to acknowledge Betty. And you may not know it, but today is it's her half birthday. Half birthday. And feisty chihuahua, rescued from the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society. Woohoo! Let's hear it again for the Humane Society. Here's another dog from the Humane Society. Daisy loves her backyard. She dislikes sharing it with the birds that come to feed on the bread that is thrown out to them. She takes great pride in chasing them away. It never fails that she is put back in the house so she can bark at them from the window. We call her Lazy Daisy May, but she is anything but lazy. She is always up and about barking at something real or imagined. She is so sneaky, when she thinks she can get away with it, she'll jump onto the table and steal food. Oh, this dog can walk. She can do a lot more than walking. Huh. Maybe she doesn't want to walk the runway. She is also a little escape artist. If she isn't caught in time when the door is open, she is off and running. She, she isn't chased anymore because she is always at the door waiting. She is also known for doing things too unladylike to mention. <laughs> However, she can always put a smile on our face. Daisy always gives me the warmest greeting no matter how long I've been away. She's absolutely my best friend. All my, flop, all my floppy ears Savannah has to do to brighten your day is to look at you with that funny, sweet face. Tonight she is modeling a fancy sweater handmade by Karen Leffer. She's a Chihuahua Dachshund mix, but she She's inherited all of the hound traits, which are curiosity, charm, and bravery. At age 10, she was rescued from the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society. She is 13 now, and her black coat is showing some gray. But in her aging years, she is still a very alert watchdog. You'll hear her sharp bark and persistent howl if a stranger intrudes on her domain. She also howls just to let you know she wants to be petted. I love to hear her cute howl. This lovable but sometimes grumpy granny always wants to be in the middle of all the action. She shows signs of jealousy if she thinks her two dogmates are getting more attention than her. It didn't take her long to settle into her home and she loves nothing better than chilling out watching TV with me as the other two dogs play and roughhouse. She is my couch potato buddy. Very sweet. 
a, a collection of chihuahuas, huh? Does Grandma like chihuahuas? Ripper is a chihuahua min, min pin mix. Min pins were originally bred to be working dogs tasked with the job of hunting and catching mice. So I guess the chihuahua part allows him to just watch a mouse run along a fence without even raising a paw. You're not leaving yet, little missy. Go back up there. Go back up there. You're cute, too. Um, OK, where was I? Um, he loves going on hikes and is always ready for a new adventure, just as long as he's with me and it doesn't involve water. But he also loves doing nothing all day, just napping under his faux fur bank blanket. That is very politically correct. Faux fur blanket. Ripper may look physically small, but he is mentally tough and determined. He has a natural guardian instinct that makes him, come on back, Riley, makes him want to guard the front door. That's where he stays when I leave for work and I'm at ease knowing my house is well protected by my little aggressive dog. Any intruder would definitely get ripped into by Ripper. Are you really that ferocious? <laughs> Rags is a rescue from the Santa Maria Animal Shelter. Yay! He is 15 years old young, but still looks like a puppy. His mom was a po toy poodle adopted by a couple from Bilton, and his dad was a terrier but we don't know what kind. And with that, I will turn this over to Barb Wilson. My little puppy's name is Rex. He eats so much that's tummy scent. His ears flip flop and his tail wig wig. And when he walks, he zigs and zigs. Flip flop, wig wig, zig zag. He doesn't have any pedigree, but I love him, and he loves me. This is Happy. Happy is always in a good mood and loves everyone. His mama is a massage therapist, and he is the receptionist when the clients arrive. I love it. We all, and, and he's all dressed up. I love that, too. <laughs> Everyone falls in love with Happy. His favorite hobbies are swimming and playing ball. Mom has the empty nest syndrome since her daughter moved out and now has Happy to take her place. And how long have you and Happy been together, Leslie? Just a year and a half. And where did you uh, acquire him? Very good. And you... Yes, you were both you were both rescued at the at the right time. Very nice. So go on back down there again, Leslie, and show both of yourselves off, and then you can go off the end of the stage. I think it's whoop. There we go. There we go. Nice. Happy took the shortcut. Diamond's a seven-year-old. He was rescued from a local animal rescue group. And Eric, which, which one was that? Do you know? Paul Schmidt. With Benita Dale? Up, up on the hill? Very good. See, we're all in this together. And it's all in the name of wonderful lives for dogs and human beings. Some of her favorite activities include, include watching TV, playing with toys, and tearing up her bed like a wild child. Diamond doesn't like hot weather, so you can find her most days on the couch basking in the air conditioning. She will occasionally let her human share the couch. Go back, go back down there, Eric. Share the couch, but with much reluctancy. When the weather is not too hot, she also loves sunbathing in the dirt. Yes, you heard it right, the dirt. It's her favorite place. She may be a diamond in the rough, but she's priceless to us. Havanese are known for their intelligent, jackrabbit-like running gait and for getting along with other animals of all sorts. She was born on my birthday 
and was a gift from a dear friend who is no longer with us. She was one of two girls in a litter of six and is the smallest of them all now that they're grown. I chose her because she had heart-shaped marking on each side. Take your clothes off. Are we gonna see our little heart markings there? She might not let you do that. It's private, yes it is. Loki, Loki was adopted by a young family at six weeks old. They realized they couldn't keep him after the landlord stated that he hated pit bulls. They were going to send him to a shelter if they couldn't find a home. He was about to be sent when we came across him and decided that he had to come home with us. He loves to just snuggle up and sleep on his back, has an issue with snoring, snorting, and of course, bad gas. <laughs> he, has, he has two brothers now, a three-year-old rescue uh, German Shepherd and a 10-year-old Border Collie. They all live and play together and sleep and eat as one. That's wonderful. And thank you for your rescue efforts. So I, I, I'll do that. So, so how old is Chip? You don't know how old Chip is. Do you know where you got him? Excellent answer. We like that when we hear that, that it came from the Humane Society. And he, is he a little rascal? Well, what is it? Yeah, I noticed the ball and chain. That's why I thought maybe he might be a little rascal. And what is it that you like the most about Chip? Kind and sweet. He's very kind and sweet. Does he sleep on your bed with you? No, we don't go that far, huh? Okay. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about Chip? Why has he chosen this costume today? Is there a reason for that? It looks like you're a police officer. I don't know. He's just kind of, kind of crazy, so I kind of chose it. Well, we're really glad that you're here tonight with Chip, and now you get to walk down there and show everybody Chip as well as yourself. There you go. There goes Chip and Michaela. Thank you, Michaela and Chip. Nice job. Nice job, you two. Little Lucy is a petite and playful Queensland healer and black lab mix. She has been settling into her no, new home very well for the past seven months and just loves to play all day with her three kids. How are you doing over there? I'm not going out there. Yeah, I'm not so sure about this. There might be a treat somewhere in the process. Okay. Um, so seven months and just loves to play all day with her three kids and older sister, Leffy, a German shepherd. Glenda, do we have Leffy here tonight? No? Okay. Lucy is agile and smart. Her favorite things to do are run and jump. Obstacle courses are made for her. This smart girl learned to her commands. You wanna go back out there again, Kaylin? Kellen, you wanna go back out there? One more time. You're doing a great job, young man. Um, are Lucy Lou, and where uh, Linda did uh, Lucy? Where did she come from? Up in Paso. Okay, very good. If you want to go off the end there, that's fine, or you can come back up. We're coming this way. Nice job, young man. We're coming this way. Tim is a tremendous and faithful volunteer at the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society. How many years have you been out there? Close to three. Three? Wow. It seems like longer because you're, you are there whenever I'm there and you're there a lot. And he's been featured as our volunteer of the month and much, much more. And we sincerely appreciate your efforts out there. If we did not have volunteers, our agency would not exist. And I share that with each and every one of you because you too could be a volunteer out at our shelter and I hope that you will think about it. 
And if that agency doesn't exist, neither will many of these dogs. That's a very good point. Thank you. So, Tim, I want you to be honored as you go down there, as well as Rocky. And the, the formal name for Rocky is Rocklin O'Longhair. I like that. He must have a little Scottish going on in there. He was given to us by some, some people that didn't like small dogs. He is small but has a big personality. You get to turn around and get back out there again. I'm going to start talking about you again. He loves everybody when people come to our house. He always wants to be with the guests. He must be just as nice as you, Tim. Very nice. Thank you, Tim, for all you do, for all you do, and thank you, Rocky. I am not even going to introduce this woman. I've been told she is to introduce herself. I was all prepared to introduce Penny, but I have been told to turn the microphone over. Now, uh, before I move on, I do want to introduce Sarah's interpreter, Kelly Johnson, and I want to thank you for being here this evening. And I will. This works as a boss. Oh, yeah. Yes. So from this point moving forward, no applause. It's sign language. This is how we applaud because Penny gets riled up about it. Um, Sarah has a wonderful story to share. Please sit back and uh, absorb this. This is one of the beauties and wonderment between animals and people that we so appreciate. Sarah? Thank you very much. Um, first of all, the reason why she's barking every time everybody's clapping is she's letting me know that, somebody, that there's clapping going on because she is what's called a hearing dog. She, I'm deaf, so I can't hear. So she lets me know when there's sounds and things all over the place. So real quickly, I'll walk down so you can now have a peek. Uh, Penny is three years old. She is a Schnauzer Terrier mix. She was trained by International Hearing Dog and Company, um, which is located in Colorado. She was trained for almost 10 months before they delivered her to me. She is a wonderful dog. Um, she was trained Penny, sit. Um, many people are familiar with uh, FaceTime or Skype. Um, it's a video conferencing type of software, and they have developed something very similar to talk on the phone. When you call, when you call it a person on the phone, what will end up happening now is it's routed through a national call center that is staffed with interpreters, very, very skilled sign language interpreters, much like Kelly, um, who then will place the video call to the deaf individual. The deaf individual will come up on a screen, and it's a split screen so you can see the interpreter, and then you can see yourself. Then as you sign, the interpreter will voice what's being said into the telephone and then what the person who speaks to you says, they will sign back, so that you have real time and very natural communication. Prior to that, it was using something that looked like an electric typewriter, and you would have to type back and forth. Now, not everybody is really good with typing, and then there's not, many people aren't good with spelling or knowing English, because English is a foreign language to, sign, to deaf people. So it could create some really interesting miscommunications because of that. So having it go through a sign language interpreter is so much more clear and so much more natural. And it's really been a wonderful, wonderful um, thing. And it's all funded through the FCC. So the FCC, um, when you have to, when you get your phone bill and you have that nice little extra charge from FCC, 
that's what helps pay for those accessibility things for us. Uh, one more mention about Penny before we call it a day, because I know we're on a time schedule. Um, Penny was a rescue dog. She was taken from a high kill shelter in New Mexico. And the company that trains her, International Hearing Dogs in Company, has been training hearing dogs since the 70s. And it's all nonprofit. So anytime the um, corporation gets a new dog, it costs around fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for a dog to be trained. The deaf individuals are not required to pay that much for that. They pay about two hundred dollars to cover the cost of the dog vest, the leash, microchipping, and um, having them spayed and neutered. The training itself is all covered by voluntary donations. If you ever are thinking about looking at another um, organization that you may want to donate to, I highly recommend checking them out because they change people's lives. I can't tell you how much having Penny in my life has opened my horizons and changed things so much for the better. So um, I really, really appreciate all of you who are so very enthusiastic about the Humane Society and supporting the animals and giving animals a second chance to find a good life and to do more. So thank you so much for all of that and I hope that you all have a wonderful evening and anyone who has questions afterwards feel free to come up and chat. Penny loves to meet new people. All right, I'll give you back to Betty. Thank you very much. So when you see a charge on your telephone bill that says for hearing impaired, honey, that's where the money goes to. So now you'll pay your bill and you don't feel bad about it because you know that's what it is. Oh, another thing I want to mention is our silent auction is being closed. And the next thing that's coming up is going to be the winners. Okay, it's time for the awards. We're going to do it a little bit different this year. We're going to call you up in groups. And we'd like, when I call your dog's name, please bring your dog over to the staging area. Rick will be here when I call the winners. I will call from third, second, and first place. And as I call your name, please come up on the stage on this side. Over here, get your, your award, and then please go down the ramp. And third place, Diamond. Come on, Diamond, you can do it. Largest doesn't actually always mean tall. tall. <laughs> In second place, largest dog, we have Loki. Loki. Come on, Loki. By the way, that dog can kiss. And in first place, we have Alibi. Come on, baby. The next category is Smallest Dog. Third place, Ripper. In second place is Daisy. And in first place is Sugar. Next category is I'm Too Cute, and in third place is Oreo. In second place is Casey Cutie. I think that's a good prize. And in first place, we have Honey. Welcome home. Okay, this category is Best Dressed Female. Yeah, she had a hip replacement, so we have to be patient. Come on, honey, you can do it. Best dressed female, third place, honey. And best dressed female, second place is Pixie. Pixie, come on in. And best dressed female, in first place, Bella. Oops, somebody's having a little too...
best dressed male in third place is Ripper. Come on, Ripper. Best dressed male, second place is Rags. And in first place, best dressed male, Chip. Come on, Chip. Bring that ball and chain up here. Best trick in third place, Bella. Come on, Bella, you need to go around again. Best trick, second place, Rags. Rags, come on up. Rags is coming. Come on, Rags. Good job. And in best trick category, first place is Penny. Penny. Shortest tail category. And third place is Daisy. Daisy. Shortest tail in second place is Ginger. You'll notice that none of these dogs walking down the runway at this point have a tail. And in first place, shortest tail category is Diamond. Come on, Diamond, strut that stuff up here. Here we go. Longest tail category. In third place, Rocky. Dachshund. Rocky, the soft red, really cute dachshund. He might have gone home. All right, all right, we'll look for him later. Thank you for the update. All right, in second place, longest tail, we have a happy dog coming up. Come on up, Happy. Oh, Happy gave the other dog a little kiss on his way. And in first place, we have Funny Face. Funny Face, come on up and show them how cute your tail is. Longest ears category. In third place, we have Savannah. Longest ears category. In second place, Lucy. Come on. And in first place, our already gone home really cute dog is Rocky. And here's my favorite category. Last but not least, the kissers. Third place, Lucy. Lucy needs to come back up. In second place, Savannah. And my favorite kisser, Loki, come on up in first place. I still have the slobber on my face. <laughs> come. Congratulations to all the winners. This is a task that the judges take seriously. This is so much fun, but it is so hard because the dogs are all precious, they're all meaningful, and we love them so much. So thank you for participating. Please ask your friends to come next year as well. This is a great activity, it's for a good cause, and thank you everyone for being here.